I'm Leandro and I'm doing this video because I would like to show you a quite neat experiment that I did today. Um, you see, today I was shown this video which is called well, how to send an email. It's really old, obviously. And here, in the last part of the video, we can hear how they actually transmit a program um, right during the crates. Uh, it's very interesting. It, this, is, this was made for the BBC Micro, which is an old British computer I don't really know much about. And uh, well, let me show you how they actually transmitted the the audio the, of the program. Let me see. Hmm. Well, it was during the credit. Here, start the tape. Sweet from Earl's Court. Can you listen? Quite interesting, isn't it? I was told that. Um, in those days, it was pretty usual for some uh, computer um, radio programs to transmit software on the air with this kind of tones. So, so I wanted to, to see if I could actually retrieve the program from this audio. So the first thing I did was to download this, this video from YouTube in the best possible quality. So I did that. And here it is. With the assistance of the app. What I did next was to extract the audio using VLC. That's quite easy because it has an, an option of convert and, stre and stream. So with this, you can pretty easily end up with the original audio like this. Let me see here, full audio. So. Now I have the, the audio separated from the video. Later, what I had to do was to open this audio with a special audio editing program. You probably know it, it's Audacity. Or Audacity, I don't know how to pronounce that. And here, two things had to be done. First, the audio had to be converted to mono and then it had to be cleaned up a little bit. I also had to, to amplify the wavelength because it was really um, not, I mean, it was very low. It had to be like at least two times or three times the magnitude that it had in the original video. So I did that. I'm not going to show you all the process because it's quite annoying, but it wasn't that difficult. It was just, I mean, you have to split the channels, and drop the left channel, get the right channel, remove this chunk and this other chunk at the end, and then amplify, and that's it. I had a little problem because Audacity does not allow you to export 8-bit WAV, uh, WAV, how do you pronounce that? Well, WAV uh, audios. Mono. It does allow you to do that with the stereo files, but not with mono. So I had to open up that sound with a virtual machine with Windows XP, and I, <laughs> I used, um, I think it was, wait, <laughs> Messenger. <laughs> I had to, <laughs> well, that was old. <laughs> I had to use Goldway to do that. So after I did that, uh, I think here it is. This is the original file, and I ended up with this one over here, which is the mono version. <clears throat> and it's quite quite clean, actually. I didn't expect to get such a clean sample from a YouTube video. After uh, I got this, well, I had to use some special tools. Uh, obviously, there is like a big community for these kind of, com of computers from the 80s, and I have done a few things uh, with a Commodore 64 utilities, but I never did with the BBC Micro, so I had to research a little bit, and I ended up finding, let me see, well, it's a program that it's called 
CSW200, which allows you to take an audio file and convert it to an intermediate format, which is called CSV, CSWB. How do you say that? Well, <laughs> obviously, English is not my native language, so <laughs> I'm doing the best I can here. <laughs> and with this file, you can generate a, a, yet another kind of file, which is the UEF file, which is a special um, file format that is used by the BBC micro emulator that I got. So, you first take the WAV file that you cleaned up, you convert it to CSWV, then you convert that to UF, UEF with this other tool. And once you have that, then you are ready to try it on the emulator, which is, let me see, right here, this BM3, that's a weird name, okay. So here's the BBC Micro emulator, obviously. And I didn't have a clue about how to load the program from here. <laughs> I mean, I can go here, file, load tape, load tape, <clears throat> and select, well, that's a few of my private files, okay. <laughs> no, no problem here. <laughs> and let me see. Drums, where are the drums here? No, this is not the wrong. Ah, tapes. And I can select the file. And it seems, I mean, the emulator didn't say anything, so I'm going to guess that it was a valid file. So now I have to use the emulated computer to load from the tape. So since I have no idea how to do that, I have to research it out a little bit, and I found that you have to write these three lines. So I get the emulator once again and I type this. Mm, I don't remember exactly the keyboard layout for this computer, so I have to test until I find the characters that I need. <laughs> okay, here it is. Tape, page equals ampersand E zero zero. I have no idea what I'm doing. And then uh, chain, and let's see. <laughs> so there it is. <laughs> well, here it is. A computer program that was pretty much hidden. <laughs> in a YouTube video, a program for the BBC Micro. I wonder how old this is. This has to be at least 30 years old. So, well, <laughs> here it is. I'm really happy. I mean, it, it's completely useless, I know, but it was fun. <laughs> so, let's press the spacebar. Whoa. <laughs> what is this? Arresting pop group to me only. Four star transport and water computer language. This looks like a crossword puzzle. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> I have no idea how to play. Uh, I'm typing stuff, but nothing's happening. Obviously, the mouse is not going to work. Hmm, well, it seems it worked, but now I have no idea what to do with this program. So, mystery solved. What do you think about it? Please uh, feel free to leave your comments and ask any questions you may have. Uh, bye bye. Let me see how I close the thing. Ah, here.